bakers! I'm going to show you real quick how to do a flambe. Now flambe is the French word for flame, so yeah, we're going to light something on fire. So while I talk about it, I'm going to get it started. So I'm going to get some butter on to go ahead and start melting down. Now this is really common as an action station um, or a table side service. Uh, most of my experience has been with action stations. So I would kind of have all my mise en place, all the ingredients I need, and then I would just throw in as I went. I wouldn't really measure. So what you're looking for is just generally one part butter to one part brown sugar. Um, so you can use flambe, lots of things. There's lots of savory applications to flambe. But for the dessert route, we typically mostly do fruit. I've done other things, but fruit is kind of most, more standard. The most common flambeys you can do are Bananas Foster, which was created in New Orleans, and it's delicious. So it's the same thing, butter and brown sugar with bananas. You can do Cherries Jubilee, again, the same thing, um, but with cherries. And then there's Crepe Suzette, which is also very common, but it uses orange segments with crepes. So same principle, just different fruit, a couple different flavorings that are different. So my butter is mostly melted, so I'm going to add about equal parts-ish, ish, it's not that important, of brown sugar. Set that aside. And as this melts, it's, not, it's kind of look a little separated, and that is okay. And after that, I'm going to add my fruit. Today, I'm going to do pineapple because I want to do pineapple. So I already have some pineapple sliced. This recipe goes pretty quickly, so you definitely need to have all your mise and cloths ready to go. This recipe is all about temperature, and everything has to be screaming, screaming hot. So we definitely want to make sure our eye is on, our burner is on high, high heat. We want to see lots and lots of bubbles. It's going to tell us if things are getting hot. Now I'm going to add my fruit, which again today is pineapple, but doesn't have to be. You just want to make sure you're choosing a fruit that can hold up to a lot of heat. So if I try to do raspberries, um, they would just fall apart. Or blueberries, something like that. Strawberries can hold it up, hold up though pretty well. Blackberries, not so much. You can do apples, peaches, pears, plums, lots of different fruits you can do. So I'm going to get my pineapple going. Yeah, separate. And very important that we, again, keep it hot, but actually warm all of our pineapple through. If our pan is not screaming hot, when we go to add our alcohol later, it's not going to ignite. So alcohol is what makes our flambe actually flambe. So pretty important that we choose a high proof alcohol. So today I'm using whiskey. Beer or wine is not going to be strong enough. I typically like to pick a pretty high one. If I was doing this in the industry for a, for a demonstration, uh, I would definitely want to use something like a 150, uh, 151. It has a really high alcohol content, like the highest legal alcohol you can get. That's just going to ensure that I get a flame. Because if I'm doing it as a demonstration and I don't get a flame, it's really disappointing. Trust me, I've messed it up before and it's very disappointing. Um, and I've learned my lesson. But this one is a 40 proof, so that's going to be just fine. But you can use rum, tequila, mezcal, um, gin even. But I want to make sure all my pineapple gets cooked all the way through um, and heated all the way through. And I have lots of nice, big, angry bubbles, and that's exactly what I want. Here in a second, I'm going to add my, my whiskey, but I'm going to talk about safety first. So, whenever we're doing a foam bed, we never want to add the alcohol while it's on the heat. We never want to add it from the bottle. So, if I added it straight from the bottle, what can happen is as it ignites, it can actually ignite the stream from the pan to the bottle and bring the flame into the bottle which can cause an explosion inside your bottle so it can send glass and fire everywhere. Definitely don't want to do that. So we always want to have it in another container. We always want to take it off the heat and I'm going to turn off the light so you can see it a little bit better. We're going to take it off the heat. And if you don't have a gas burner at home, you can use a lighter at this point, but I do. So I'm just going to lean it forward until it catches on fire. <laughs> and I can shake it and it'll 
give me that little bit of extra flame. We don't want to toss it because then it could throw flames back at us. And then we can add a little cinnamon and it'll give us a little bit of firework sparks right there at the end. Give that last little hurrah for our guests, which is always really nice. And wait till that alcohol has completely burned off. And that's going to be our indicator that there's no alcohol left. And then we're going to check it for consistency. We want to make sure it's got like a thickness to it. If it doesn't, we can let it cook a little bit longer just to reduce a little bit. We don't want it to be too watery. We want it to be kind of like a nice coating syrup. So if I drag my spoon through, I want it to take a while to fill in. I'm like, if it was just water, it would kind of just immediately rush in. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to take it off the heat, bring it closer over here where I'm going to plate it. All right, so I'm going to plate it with the cheesecake I made the other day. So I'm going to take a couple of pineapple slices out and fan them before I get them on the plate. If I try to fan them on the plate, I'm going to make a huge mess. You want to be careful. Obviously, it's very, very hot. You should probably wait a couple more seconds before you attempt to do this so you don't burn your fingers. And if you were in the industry, you definitely wouldn't use bare fingers. You would definitely use gloves. But that seems like a waste of gloves right now. So I definitely don't want to do that. So I have it in my nice little fan. Bring my plate over and I'm going to scoop them all up on my offset spatula and just set them gently next to my cheesecake. Stay. Perfect. And then, ooh, got a little sauce there. I can take some of the extra sauce in my pan and drizzle it over because that is just awesome caramel sauce. It actually has some of that pineapple flavor in it because our pineapple has released a lot of its liquids. So it's basically just this awesome pineapple caramel, which is gonna go really great with my cheesecake. If I was doing this in a restaurant, I would probably have um, some whipped cream, some Chantilly cream, um, on my cheesecake slice, maybe with some kind of chocolate garnish just to finish it. But today for me at home, I'm not going to do that. So this is going to be my finished plate presentation. I hope you enjoyed my demo today. Um, please, if you decide to do this at home, be incredibly careful. Make sure your parents know that you're doing it. Um, and remember, Chef Chanko did not tell you to buy alcohol or set fire to your kitchen. <laughs>